This video is going to go over just the ratio and root tests. I know there are other videos that I've made that go through a whole bunch of tests at once, but the ratio especially is a test that gets used a lot at the end of the chapter with the next couple topics, so I really want to make sure that you're comfortable with that, and I didn't put a root test example in the last video. So all of this is going to work with are those two tests, I'm looking at some pretty basic ones and finishing with a little more challenging one. So when we look at this, I guess the best way to explain when you're looking for ratio tests, uh, common, common features of series that need ratio tests, X, um, anything that's factorial definitely uses ratio tests the most. Anything that is exponential that you cannot do a basic either geometric test or a comparison test when you have some sort of combination of a polynomial piece with a numerator, denominator, and exponential like this first one you see, that's when you're really going to see the ratio test come into play. Root test is going to be strictly limited to whenever you see an entire uh, function w within your series that is taken to an nth power. So for the first one, we see this n on the top and 2 to the n on the bottom. Now what your ratio says is if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of your a sub n plus 1, which means just the next term, so n plus 1 in place of your n's, divided by your a sub n, which we I never write divided by, I always put times the reciprocal of your original series formula. Take that limit, simplify as much as you can. If you get an answer that ends up being bigger than 1, we say it diverges. If it is less than 1, it converges. If u equals 1, the ratio test is inconclusive. So first thing I can do is I can simplify the exponential. These two will cancel, and you'll be left with a 2 on the bottom. So you get n plus 1 on the top and a 2n on the bottom. We get a limit of 1 half using our limit guidelines. 1 half is less than 1. So my conclusion is that it converges by the ratio test. So this one is probably the, one of the easiest examples to see of the ratio test. For the second one, uh, this one is probably one of the most obvious examples of the ratio test because of that factorial. Factorial, really, there's not a lot we can do with it with any of the other tests. It's not a geometric, it's not a P-series, can't compare very well. So that's the best, uh, the best test to use here. So again, what we do is we take the limit as we go to infinity of the n plus 1 term, well, it's already n minus 1, so if I do n minus 1 plus 1, I end up with just n factorial over n plus 1 squared times the reciprocal of the original a sub n, which is n squared over n minus 1 factorial. You really do need to know how to simplify factorials. If you take n factorial over n minus 1 factorial, you're left with an n on the top, and then you still have the n squared on the top, and then you have the n plus 1 squared on the bottom, Using my limit guidelines, I have n to the third power on top, I have n to the second power on the bottom, so bigger power on top gives me a limit of infinity as I could take n to infinity. That is definitely bigger than 1, so we would say this diverges by the ratio test. These again, pretty basic as far as the level of difficulty. The next ones you're looking at, um, this first, uh, the first one on the screen that's in front of you right now, anytime you have an entire series formula to an nth power, the best test to use is the root test. The root test is very similar to the ratio test in as, as far as what you're looking for. The root test says if you take the limit as we go to infinity of the nth root of a sub n, and you get bigger than 1, it diverges, less than 1, it converges, equal to 1, inconclusive. So the same kind of constraints that you were used to with the ratio test. So we have this whole thing to the 2n power, but then we take the nth root, the nth power, and the nth root will cancel. So we will be left with the 2n plus 3 over 3n minus 1 squared. Uh, the limit of what's in parentheses gives you 2 over 3. When I square that, I get 4 over 9. That is definitely less than 1. So again, we're using limit guidelines again, checking to see if we get less or greater than 1. So we say this converges by the root test. Uh, some books don't even really get into the root test. The AP doesn't get into the root test a lot, but it really can help you with uh, any type of series that has that nth power. And then the last one, and I've seen this show up in a lot of books. You have an nth power on the top, but you don't have an nth power on the bottom. So the root test actually makes it worse instead of better. You have a factorial. That should be your indication that it is your um, ratio test. Those factorials are one of the biggest clues, the tip-offs that you're doing the ratio test. So your ratio test, again, the limit as we go to infinity of n to the n, sorry, n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial 
over n to the n. Lots of n's here. First thing I can do is simplify factorials. I am left with an n plus 1 on the bottom. Then I have an n plus 1 to the n plus 1. So there's another way to write that. We can say it's n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1 to the first, all over n plus 1 times n to the n. And this is definitely a more challenging one. The, what, the first two are more what you'd see on a test or a quiz. But I wanted to go through this one just because it's kind of like the higher level of difficulty, one of the highest you'll see with a ratio test. So again, what I did is I took my n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power and rewrote it with exponent rules as n plus 1 to the nth times n plus 1 to the first. And the reason I did that is because now my n plus 1s will cancel. And everything that is left is to the nth power. So now I have n plus 1 over n to the nth. I will still want to figure out the limit. Well, I'm going to pretzel this, and I'm going to write it as 1 plus 1 over n to the n. This may look familiar to you. We talked about it in one of the earlier videos. We also had a question similar to this on your last quiz. And I said it's a very complex as far as a lot of steps to actually evaluate this limit. I need this power to come down. So I, to bring that power down, I have to use a natural log. I have to set this side equal to something, so we usually call it y, so we can take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of y equals the limit as we go to infinity for n. Bring down the power n natural log of 1 plus 1 over n. In order to apply L'Hopital, I need to write it in a fraction form. So I've got the natural log of 1 plus 1 over n over 1 over n. When I take the derivative of that, because right now if I put infinity in, I get the natural log of 1, uh, which is 0, over 0. So 0 over 0 get, allows me to use L'Hopital. So it's the derivative of 1 plus 1 over n over 1 plus 1 over n. Derivative of it is negative 1 over n squared over 1 plus 1 over n. Over the derivative of 1 over n is, again, negative 1 plus n squared. These cancel. We end up with 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. Now, if I put infinity in, I end up getting 1 over 1, because the 1 over n piece will go to 0. So I get 1. And you may get here and go, oh, no, I'm, I'm stuck because I get 1, and the ratio test is inconclusive. You're actually not done, and doing the last step will help you figure out the answer. If you take e on both sides, because, again, we want to get y by itself, we introduce that natural log, so now we need to get, it, get rid of it. So we get an, a limit of e. And we should all know that e is around 2.71828 and so on and so on. But no matter what, you should understand that e is bigger than 1. And therefore, this problem diverges by the ratio test. Again, you don't see a lot of problems with this level of difficulty. This is kind of taking it to the extreme. You see a lot of problems like those first two that we went over, uh, going through some basic steps. The idea, you should be able to simplify exponents. You should be able to simplify factorials and then make that determination with the ratio and with the root test. If you get a final answer when you're done taking the limit of bigger than 1, it diverges. Less than 1, it converges. If you get 1, that means the ratio and the root test do not apply. So you've got to pick one of the other tests. And we are to the end of all the tests. We've learned all there is to learn. So that means there has to be one of the other tests out there, if not more than one that will apply.